सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु माँ विद्विषावह ओ शाति 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 समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर फोर्थ चैप्टर इज कॉल्ड एस ज्ञान कर्म संन्यास योग वाइल लिविंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड वाइल बींग एंगेज इन दिस वर्ल्ड हाउ कैन वन बी फुली अवेकंड टू दैट नॉलेज ज्ञान कर्म संन्यास दैट इज द मेन थीम भगवान सेड दिस ग्रेट नॉलेज विच आई टॉट द लॉर्ड सन मकर संक्रांति डे वी शुड रिमेंबर लॉर्ड सन ही इज द फर्स्ट डिसाइपल ऑफ भगवान टू हूम दिस नॉलेज वॉज गिवन जस्ट एज दिस सन इज रेडीली अवेलेबल टू ऑल ऑफ अस भगवान से दिस नॉलेज ऑल्सो इज रेडीली अवेलेबल टू ऑल ऑफ अस उतईनम गोपा अदृशन अदृशन उदाहार्य इन रुद्रम इट कम्स बिकॉज फॉर एस टू गो टू टेम्पल एवरी डे टेक दर्शन ऑफ भगवान इज डिफिकल्ट सन कम्स एज भगवान गिविंग दर्शन टू ऑल गोपास एंड गोपीस वो आर गोइंग टू ब्रिंग वाटर फ्रॉम द वेल दिस सीक्रेटिव नॉलेज दिस नॉलेज विच इज अ ग्रेट सीक्रेट भगवान से इज आई गिव इट टू लॉर्ड सन वेन भगवान सेट दिस अर्जुन आई गेट्स अ क्वेश्चन हाउ भगवान यू आर जस्ट बॉर्न रिसेंटली ऑन जन्माष्टमी डे हाउ डिड यू गिव दिस नॉलेज टू लॉर्ड सन then bhagwan enters into the topic of avatar arjuna the difference between you and me is your knowledge is very limited your memory is very very limited but for me it is not like that i remember everything of the past and i also remember everything of the past birth this avatar topic is so beautiful unless you appreciate it in the right context we will not get clarity about what is sanatana dharma talking about bhagwan recently when i was in one balvihar second grader he came and asked he said my friend tells me god is no more and this world is without god and what every day they call balvihar like going to a church during one you know time of a day one time of a week just one hour you go he say why are you going to the temple and all god is no more i also was and he asked his mother first and mother took this question stayed with it she said i also didn't have an answer what is he trying to ask where is this question coming from prashna bija she could not understand and i asked him why do you say so he said my friend told me that in other religions god manifested and he took back his manifestation and after that there is no continuation of that particular form therefore he feels there is no god and now what are we doing you know doing our prayers going to temples doing so many things this is where the concept of avatar and sanatan dharma will give lot of clarity god in his essential nature is unmanifest god in his essential nature is unmanifest manifest nature of god is creation manifest nature of god is creation within that creation he can choose to appear in a particular form if we want to see him in one particular form that needs lot of sadhana needs lot of tapasya if we can invest that amount of tapasya he can take a physical form even in kali yuga if everybody does tapasya he will take form for everybody if one person does tapasya 
He will take a form just for that person. Sutikshna ji, he got darshan of Bhagwan. Prahlad ji also got darshan of Bhagwan. Dhruva also got darshan of Bhagwan. But in the case of Prahlad ji and Dhruva, that form was limited to specific purpose. The darshan that Dhruva had, everybody in his kingdom did not have. Father did not get, mother did not get, only Dhruva got. So avatar purpose happens in different, different ways, depending upon what kind of sadhana is done. In second grader, huh? we don't need to give too complicated answers also. You say mother and father are God. Matru Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo Bhava. Start from there. Meaning if you are unable to see God in a particular form, start seeing there where this form is available to us. Whereas they said, Taitri Upanishad, Matru Devo Bhava comes from Taitri Upanishad, Pitru Devo Bhava. But the main point is, there is never a time when Bhagwan is not. Avatara manifests, avatara unmanifests. Because something is unmanifest, doesn't mean it is not there. In Siddhabari, we have our card. They do a lot of rural projects, they make a lot of you know, handicrafts and everything. Very simple people. If you go there, such a joy to and just see how that whole village is. It said when Gurudev would go there, he would have a satsang with all the sevaks who are there. And they would come and say, people ask us, is there God? And we don't have convincing answer. And they also question, whatever you are doing, oh, you go and pray, you go and do so many things. If God is there, why can't I see him? Gurudev's simple answer was, next time when they ask you this question, pinch them very hard. Look at the person and then pinch. If he's strong enough, don't do it. Weak enough, do it. And then say, are you feeling pain? He will say, yes. He say, if you're feeling pain, show me. If you cannot show it, how, what is the proof that it is there? Meaning there are several things in our own day-to-day -day experience which don't become an object of our sense organs. We don't become an object of sense organs. Even our thoughts don't become an object of sense organ. But doesn't mean it is not there. That Bhagwan who is unmanifest, avyakta, he can choose to take a particular form, and that is called as avatar. So Bhagwan said, why he takes avatar? How he takes avatar? Why he takes avatar? He said, paritranaya sadhuna, to protect the good. The applied meaning is to protect the goodness in people. For that, Bhagwan takes avatar. If you are attending Keno Upanishad class, you should keep connecting with the story of Yaksha. Hmm? Bhagwan took avatar to remove the pride in devatas. Means not paritrana is sadhunam doesn't always happen with a sword coming in some kind of a form and then doing leela. They can also come and give us the right guidance at the right time. That also is avatara of the Lord, which keeps happening several times. After this avatara, Bhagwan made a very, very important point. The culmination of avatara is in knowledge. Culmination of knowledge of avatara is first in becoming a devotee of the Lord. And that devotee's journey culminates in knowledge. Janma karma chame divyam evam yo veti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mameti sorjuna The one who knows my divinity, one who knows my birth and karma as divine, that person is not reborn. So how did we understand this statement? One who knows his own nature as divine, his own birth and karma as divine, that person is not reborn. So this is Mahavakya, 
This is that identity revealing statement. Whatever is nature of Bhagwan, that is our essential nature. This is another beautiful facet of Vedantic devotion. It starts in devotion, but it leads us into knowledge. Otherwise, our journey can get stuck in one or the other. Right? So this is fourth chapter. That is the beauty of the topics presented here. Bhagwan started with avatara. But he said, avatara culminates in knowledge of the truth. Then he said, Bahavo jnana tapasa putaha madbhava magataha. Arjuna, don't think I am trying this knowledge on you for the first time. There are many people who have walked this path, who have become devotees of the Lord and then accomplished this stage. So it's a time-tested knowledge. Many people have walked this path. Then he said, if many people have walked it, why are there so many people who are not seeking it? Bhagwan said, you don't worry about them. Really speaking, everybody is on the same path. They are seeking that same happiness. And I have kept disappointments in the world. Whatever they are seeking as a source of happiness, one day they'll get disappointed. When that disappointment comes, our quest is in the right direction. Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manushaha Partha Sarvashaha. Vartma means path. Everybody is on my path only. What is the example we had seen for this? Siddhi Vinayak temple. temple. Everybody is standing in that line two miles long. If you just see one person, one devotee two miles away, you might find him in front of a sweet shop. You might find him in front of pan shop. You say, although it is, right now you are seeing them there, really speaking, everybody is seeking Siddhi Vinayaka. Means we don't need to get overly concerned about everybody's journey. Bhagwan says, you focus on your journey. I am here to take care of the rest. That is this path. Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manushaha Partha Sarvasha. Then Bhagwan said, if everybody is supposed to be seeking this, what is another reason because of which we don't end up seeking it? He said, because results attained through karma are very quick. If you are able to get some quick result versus another result which requires a lot of sadhana, several years of tapasya, mostly people end up picking the quick one. Kshipram hi manushe loke siddhir bhavati karmaja. People seek quick results. That is why this eternal truth is not sought. Through this, we entered the topic of four varnas. Chatur varnam mayasrishtam. Main purpose of Varna is to stay there in whichever Varna we are, increase our Sattva Guna and get Moksha. That was the main topic when it came to Varna Vyavastha. I'm just recapping, huh? all this we have seen before. If you meet after 3-4 weeks, it's good to just you know go over all the topics. Then Bhagwan said, whatever karmas we do, the main goal of entire Bhagavad Gita, main goal of Karma Yoga is not in having more actions. It is not in Karma Vistara. The final goal is in seeing the actionless self in and through every action. This is the main verse of 4th chapter, 4.18. Karmani akarmaya pashet, akarmani cha karmaya. All of you are with me? Karmani akarmaya pashet. In action, in the midst of busyness of life, he is able to pay attention to the actionless self. And akarmani cha karmaya. If ahankara is withdrawn and he is sitting quietly in one place, he doesn't mix up that thing with the actionlessness of the self. The one who knows this, Bhagwan says that person is 
Pandita, he has accomplished the supreme most purpose of human life. That person is called a Jnani. There is no other metric, other indicator of knowledge. There is no other indicator of realization. Now, who will be called an Ajnani? That whenever he steps out in the world, he feels he is bound. Flip it around. Huh? Jnani is the one who, while stepping in the world, he can pay attention to actionless self. Who will be Ajnani? Ajnani means ignorant person. Moment he is in Vyavahara, he feels he is bound. And whenever he is withdrawn, he says, only that time I am free. Means when I am by myself, when there are no people around, I am very quiet. That is Mukti. Moment I step out in the world, I am bound. That idea is what Bhagwan is trying to break over here. Then two verses came to explain how does Jnani work in Pravritti? If there is a Jnani who is involved in Vyavahara, how does he live? Which verse was it? 21st and 20, no, 20th and 23rd. 20th verse and 23rd. 21st and 22nd is Jnani in Nivrutti. That Jnani who is withdrawn, how does he live? You can just mark it later on, you can see. 20 and 23 is Jnani in Pravritti. 21 and 22, Jnani in Nivrutti. Then finally he said, the expression of this knowledge is, whatever action he is doing, he sees everything as Brahman. That was the famous verse, Brahmarpanam, Brahmahavihi, Brahmagno, Brahmanahutam. The ladle which it, with which he is offering the dravya, the dravya itself, the offerer, the fire. Everything has different names and forms, but essentially he knows everything is consciousness. Just like a painting made of a sacrifice, yajna. No matter where you touch, it is a canvas only. Like that he feels, this is one painting upon consciousness. And yajna not limited to dravya yajna, but any yajna that we do in life. Means all actions that we are doing, there should be an altar, there should be the offerer, instrument of offering, and finally the knowledge is, I am that actionless self in and through this whole action. Now Bhagwan took up another beautiful topic that was of yajna. Brahmarpanam is one dravya yajna. What he says, yajna happens in our everyday life. Bhagwan is pointing out 12 different yajnas. Towards the end of those verses, it would be good if we can recap all 12. Huh? What are those 12 different types of yajnas? You know, the background for yajna is, when we say we are studying Advaita Vedanta, we keep hearing the statement, knowledge alone will give moksha. True or not? Wherever you have heard Vedanta, you must have heard this statement. Na karmana, na prajaya, na dhanena. Tyage naike amrutatva manashu. Tyage naike means through sannyasa and knowledge, only we will get this realization. But whenever we start studying Vedanta, why do we feel that Vedanta is not working for us? Is it because that knowledge is not clear? Or is it because mind is turbulent? Option one or two? Very clearly it is two. A deep realization is, knowledge will not quieten this mind directly. Knowledge will not tame this mind directly. Purpose of knowledge is to tell us you are not the mind. And if my concern is mind is turbulent, you say there are other solutions for mellowing down this mind. So much so that if even one of these 12 yajnas, we can make it work in our life, we will start getting more confidence on our own mind. 
If you want to see how confident we are on our mind, you should look at our mind on 31st December. Whatever resolutions we take, one part of our mind is already telling us you are not able, you will not be able to hold on to this. Hmm? But Bhagwan says here, a yogi is the one who has trained his mind in such a way that some yajnas, no matter what happens, he does in his life. Rain or shine, no matter which day it is. He says, pick one out of these 12 yajnas that will bring transformative results as far as mind is concerned. That is the over overarching idea of yajna. It will complement the Vedantic knowledge that we are studying. And at some point, we'll hit this roadblock in our sadhana. So I have plenty of wisdom. I know what is Atma, I know what is Anatma, Avasthatraya, Panchakosha, everything I know. If somebody tells me you are the body, I can convince them how you are not the body. Somebody tells you are the mind, I can convince logically through Shastra Pramana that you are not the mind. But still this mind does whatever it wants. The art of taming the mind is this topic of Yajna. First Yajna, 25th verse, let us chant it. We saw this verse, huh? 25th. Daiva meva pare yajnyam Daiva meva pare yajnyam Yoginaf pare yupasate Yoginaf pare yupasate Brahma gnava pare yajnyam Brahma gnava pare yajnyam Yajne naivo pa juhvati Yajne naivo pa juhvati Daiva meva pare yajnyam Yoginaf pare yupasate, Brahma gnava pare yajnyam, yajne naivo pa juhvati. First yajna was doing puja of the Lord. Daivam eva apare yajnyam. So we had seen this meanings are not direct meanings. Huh? You have to read Bhashya to appreciate what kind of yajna is this. Simple meaning of first yajna is doing puja of the Lord. Now, if somebody says, this is my yajna, so you should apply the same discipline, what we just saw. Huh? Doesn't matter how busy we are. If this is the yajna we have taken up, he said, no day will go by when I will skip this. It is said, even if Samaya Lopa happens. Kriya Lopa should not happen. Samaya Lopa means if you are unable to do it at the same time that you decided, we should not drop that practice on that day. If you say Rudram or any other chant, I'm going to chant every day. Now it's possible that morning routine is busy, things are you know very fast moving. You so say, if I say, I will chant every day before I go to bed, I will find some time where this chanting has to be done. Same goes with Poojanam also. That is why we have to be judicious in the duration of Pooja. If you are planning to do it every day and you say, I'll do it for one and a half hour, it will work for a few days, but then it will fall apart. So our Rishis were so Farsighted. They also gave us Manasa Puja. Hmm? They said if you are unable to do the big, longer one, elongated one, elaborate one, just do the shorter one, five minutes. But every day, every day. That is the main part of Yajna. Huh? One of our Swamiji would say, one who is moody cannot do Yajna. Means suddenly you start feeling, one day you will do a lot of <coughs> sadhana, second day again you start another thing, third day you change totally different type of practice that you are doing. I say that is not going to work. One thing we hold on to and do it sincerely. Second yajna was Brahmagna apare yajnam yajne neopa juhvati. This type of yajna is whatever we have heard in Vedanta. 
I am not Ahankara, I am Brahma. This again and again he repeats in his mind, means he does Nididhyasanam. Second yajna is meditation, where we are offering this finite aham, finite ahankara, into the fire of knowledge. And that altar is Brahma. Letting of this finitude in Brahma. In other words, you can call it as Tatpada Lakshartha. Tatpada Lakshartha means pure consciousness, which is the essential nature of Bhagwan also. In that, letting go of this finite ahankara. Means again and again, repeating the teaching of Vedanta in our mind. This also is one form of yajna. This alone is Nididhyasanam. Bhagwan says it will bring lot of good results in our life. Now 26th one is two more yajnas. Shrotra dini indriyanyanye Sanyamagni shujuhvati Shabda din vishayananye Indriyagni shujuhvati Shrotra dini indriyanyanye Sanyamagni shujuhvati Shabda din vishayananye Indriyagni shujuhvati so here the metaphor of yajna is, there is a fire, there is an offering. So what is that fire, what is the offering? Bhagwan gives different, different metaphors. So the fire here is Sanyama Agni. Sanyama Agni means the fire of sense control. Fire is Sanyama Agni. Shrotradini Indriyani Anye. Sayyama Agnishu Juhvati. All the sense organs, they are offering that sense organs as an ahuti in the fire of sense control. Means they are trying to live a life of solitude. Withdrawing the mind from all other external things and putting this mind or withdrawing this mind completely from external world. It has a great benefit. It will help us recognize our own divinity. It is just like when there is constant sound, silence is not noticed. But when you just stop speaking, that silence which is ever there is noticed. So when sense organs are active, constantly perceiving the world, the divinity within is unnoticed. The quietude inside is unnoticed. So we should never undermine this yajna also. Some might do it as their main sadhana, but we can do it for short duration in the day, where we cut off from the whole world and just try to withdraw everything, all sense organs in this fire of sense control. Sayam Agnishu Shrotradini Indriyani Juhvati. And here you will notice all these yajnas need self effort. That is why it becomes a yajna. Huh? These yajnas are not natural, it will not suddenly happen one day that we start withdrawing all sense organs and fold it back into this Sayam Agni. It needs self-effort. This is what is called as Upavasa actually. One form of Upavasa is Rasanindriyu control. Means you fold back all the desire of taste into the Sanyama Agni. But another meaning of Upavasa is to remain Nirahara. Nirahara means no intake from all sense organs. Just like we have food diet, right? 
we should also have something called a social media diet. You determine the time, determine the duration, where none of those inputs are going to come inside. And we'll get the same result which is promised of Yajna. What is the final result? He says, whatever impurities of the mind are there, those will be washed away. He said, try this from different sense organs, trying to keep all those external stimuli away and merging them in this fire of Sanyama Agni. So Upasa has several meanings. One part of it is with food, but other part of it is related to all other inputs. What we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, and what we touch. Being very, very judicious about them and pulling them back. That is the sadhana of staying nirahara. I had shared this earlier, Vaikuntha Ekadashi, or there are some Ekadashis where they do Nirjala Ekadashi. They don't drink water. But when Mahatmaji would say, it is actually Nirjada Ekadashi. Means that day you don't pay attention to any Jada Padartha. Don't pay attention to Anatma on that day, inert things on that day, pay attention to that divinity. That is the sadhana, something which will be more relevant to us to, for us to practice. Now you see the second line of that verse. Shabda deen vishayan anne indriya nishu juhvati. What is the difference between the first line and the second line? Now pay attention to what is the Agni over here. What was the Agni in the first line? Sayyama Agni. Self-control was the Agni. What was the offering? Sense organs were the offering. Means you are withdrawing all the sense organs in this fire of sense control. Second line, what is the Agni? Indriya is the Agni. Look at the last quarter. Indriya Agni Shu Juhvati. The fire is sense organs. What is the offering? Shabdhadini Vishayani Anni. All the objects which are there outside, objects of each sense organ, they are the offering into this fire of sense organs. Means first line was somebody who was very withdrawn. Second line is for somebody who is very active in the world. Second yajna is when we are active in the world, what should be our mindset so that even perception of the world becomes a yajna. He says, don't look upon this whole world as names and forms. But look upon this vishaya as something which is coming and being offered into this fire of indriyas. It's a more practical yajna. Huh? The first one, if you say, I have to remain withdrawn, sometime I can remain withdrawn. But we have to interact in the world, do so many things. Bhagwan Shankaracharya writes one word. The only way to make this yajna really successful is by ensuring that whatever vishayas we are taking inside, it is dharmic vishaya. Aviruddha vishaya grahanam homam manyate. Aviruddha vishaya grahanam means whenever you offer oblations in the fire, you cannot offer anything and everything. Right? They have dravya shuddhi. Certain types of dravyas only you can offer. Like that if you see, everything is combustible. But everything cannot be offered into that yajna. He says like that, every vishaya which is going inside should be dharmic vishaya. In particular, audio and visual. What we see and what we hear. Our Puranas are poetic philosophy. Gurudev would say this, you know, whatever is said in philosophy, same thing will come in Puranas in a beautiful way. You must have heard the two name of two Rakshasas, Madhu and Kaitabha. Madhu and Kaitabha. How are they born? From the Vishnoho Karna Malod Bhutam. 
from the dirt in the ears of Bhagwan Vishnu. Vishnu ho karna malod bhutam. It is just to say, if our Shrotrendriya is having some kind of impure grahanam, if it is listening to something which is incorrect, what arises from that is Madhu and Kaitaba. Madhu means what? Raga. Hmm? Madhu means Raga, attachment. Kaitaba means Dvesha. He says, be very careful. Your mind is very sacred. Just like that Yajna Kunda was very sacred, you could not put anything and everything in it. Our mind is also very sacred. We cannot afford to put anything and everything in it. If our inputs are agitating and we expect mind to be calm, you see, that is never going to happen. And one of the challenge of Vedanta is, whatever is there in your mind, everything has come from outside only. Think about it. Huh? Is there something in your mind which has not come from outside? Any thought, any object, any opinion, any conviction, whatever is there inside has come through some word outside or some external stimuli outside. If it comes from inside, it will be rishis. That is called as yoga ja pratyaksha. Those rishis who meditated, their revelation did not come from outside. It came from samashti directly to them. But for us as jivas, majority of our perceptions form our impressions inside. So this is that yajna he is doing. Wherever he goes, he makes sure that inside his bhava is shuddha. And whatever outside might be agitating or bothering, he doesn't get involved there. This is our responsibility for a healthy mind. Just like how careful we are with physical body, like that we should be careful with our mind. This is second yajna, Shabdadin Vishayananye Indriyagnishu Jufvati. We have alarms in our homes, right? We put it on different modes. Even small movement is there, it starts beeping. Like that, one alarm should be there in our mind. Alarm for what? Viruddha Vishaya. Bhagwan said, our Grahanam should be Aviruddha Vishaya. But if there is any Viruddha Vishaya coming, Viruddha Vishaya means that object which will agitate this mind. Towards that, we should be very, very alert. Now comes the fifth one. It is for somebody who is doing Ashtanga Yoga Sadhana. Sarvani Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Atma Sayyama Yoga Agnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite Sarvani Indriya Karmani Atma Sayyama Yoga Agnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite One of the beauty of Bhagavad Gita is Bhagavan gives a lot of options. So much so that any school of thought studies Bhagavad Gita, they start feeling this is our school of thought. Hmm? So if somebody from Ashtanga Yoga studies Bhagavad Gita, you ask him, what does Bhagavad Gita speak about? He says, Bhagavad Gita speaks about Ashtanga Yoga. You ask somebody from Vishishtadvaita, you studied Bhagavad Gita, what does it speak about? He says, it speaks about Vishishtadvaita. That is Bhagwan's forte, that he doesn't leave anybody out. Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. Jagat Guru is somebody whose teaching never leaves anybody out. So this darshana is mainly focused around Ashtanga Yoga Sadhana. We need not get overwhelmed by all these yajnas. Eh? 
You say, oh my God, there are 12 of them. How can I do all 12? Anyone, whichever we connect to, do that sincerely. When we have a buffet, it is not expected that we should try every dish. <laughs> right? You just take whichever you want, whichever you can, you know, is feasible. Whatever suits well. Otherwise, it's a mountain. <laughs> a giant mountain of everything. Like that, this yajnas, Bhagwan says you think through whichever one speaks more to you. And for that, we'll have to sit down and reflect on our own. Okay? Sarvani Indriya Karmani. All the actions of Indriyas, Jnana Indriyas and Karma Indriyas. Means this is referring to, I'll be very happy if someone tells me, Ashtanga Yoga, this is the Yajna. What will be Indriya Karmas for Ashtanga Yoga Sadhana? Very good. Yama and Niyama. Yama and Niyama. All the disciplines whenever we are interacting with people and the disciplines when we are by ourselves. Discipline while interacting with others is called as Yama. Disciplines while we are by ourselves, disciplines we have put on ourselves, that is called as Niyama. Means something like Satyam, truthfulness. So this is one of the yama. While we are interacting with people, this is the rule or this is the value system that he holds on to. But something like swadhyaya. Swadhyaya is a niyama. So that is more upon himself. Right? When he is by himself, that is the rule he has taken upon himself. Like this, all Indriya Karmanis means very, very alert living disciplined life, that he is offering into Atma Sanyama Yoga Agni. Okay, Atma Sanyama Yoga Agni is again the fire of mind control. The title of sixth chapter is what? Bhagavad Gita? Not Dhyana Yoga, Atma Sanyama Yoga. Atma Sanyama Yoga. Atma Sanyama Yoga Nama Shashto Dhyaya That's how the Pushpika Vakya is. Dhyana Yoga is the main topic. But Atma Sanyama means mind control. How to pull back this mind. In that fire of mind control, he is offering all his transactions. Indriya Karmani is that. And Prana Karmani is more focused on Pranayama. So whenever you talk about Ashtanga Yoga, one of the uniqueness of Ashtanga Yoga is Pranayama. And it's a very subtle topic to be learnt under guidance. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, if somebody can do Pranayama sincerely, it removes Deha Dosha. Deha Dosha means whatever limitations might be there in physical body, that can be removed through pranayama. Immediate result of pranayama is it quietens the mind. That's why even in schools they have breathing exercise. It doesn't expect any particular age group, any particular background. You just focus on your breath, any kind of mind will get quietened. That is a beauty. And Ramon Marshiji in Upadesha Sara said, Vayu Rodhanath Liyate Manaha Jala Pakshivat Rodha Sadhanam. He says, Your mind and breath are connected. Mind and breath, both of them are connected. The root is the same, Maya Shakti. But the breath is grosser to control. So if you regulate the breath, make it deeper inhale and exhale, mind which is subtle and difficult to control will come within our control. That is the yajna he does. Indriya Karmani and Prana Karmani. Indriya Karmani will refer to Yama and Niyama. And also Asana. They are also 
Indriya Karmani only. Asana is an elaborate topic. Huh? What we know as yoga today is mostly one limb of Ashtanga Yoga. Hmm? Yogasana is one of the eight limbs. The main purpose of Yogasana is body should become flexible and you can hold one posture for an elongated time without moving. Without moving. Huh? Sthira Sukham Asanam. Sthira is stable. Sukham is without body demanding attention. If that much happens, then the purpose of entire Yogasana is fulfilled. According to Patanjali Maharshi. Right? Because the main limb of Ashtanga Yoga is the last step, which is Samadhi. Where we sit for meditation and burn this knot of ignorance. But to sit down, we should be able to sit down. For that, we need a healthy body. For that, there are yogasanas. So this is the fifth yajna. Sarvani Indriya Karmani, Prana Karmani Chapare, Atma Sayama Yogagno, Jukhvati, Jnana Deepite. Jnana Deepite is a very beautiful word. He says, no sadhana should be done out of ignorance. Means whatever our body allows. He said, listen to your body. First day, don't start doing Shirshasana. <laughs> Jnana Deepite means all of this. Because somebody is doing, doesn't mean we have to do it. Right? Listening to our body and knowing what is the right sadhana for us. That is Jnana Deepite. Also knowing what is the purpose for which we are doing this sadhana. Suddenly in between, we should not get carried away by some kind of Siddhi or some other you know, benefit which will come along the way. Now there are few more Yajnas. Eh? As I said, this is like a buffet offering. Whatever you want, you can pick. Okay, 28th verse. Dravya Yajna Stapo Yajna Yoga Yajna Stathapare Swadhyaya Jnana Yajnascha Yataya Samshita Vrataha Dravya Yajna Stapo Yajna Yoga Yajna Stathapare Swadhyaya Jnana Yajnascha Yataya Samshita Vrataha which yajna is this now? Sixth one. Sixth one. If you count Sarvani, Indriyani, Karmani and Prana Karmani as two different, then you will just add one more. Okay, so this will be the seventh. Let us count them as different. Indriya and Prana Karma make it seventh yajna. Dravya yajna is the seventh one. Dravya yajna, Bhagavan Shankaracharya says, this person is somebody who has lot of Shraddha, and he goes to special places, special Tirtha Kshetra, looks out for special days to do Dhanam. Tirtheshu Dravya Viniyogam Yajna Buddhya Kurvanti Yete Dravya Yajna. Dravya Yajna means does Dhanam on auspicious days and in auspicious places. It is said, when a newborn child is there, dhanam done at that time has multifold punya. Vasudevji, when Bhagwan Krishna is born, right at that moment he makes sankalpa. Thousand cows I am going to give. And he doesn't have anything. Huh? <laughs> but that sankalpa itself in Kali Yuga, he said, gives punya. That is Bhagwan's blessings in Kali Yuga. Parishiji Maharaj, when he is born, Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira does sankalpa of giving lot of dhanam. And whenever it comes to this karma kanda, desha kala matters a lot. When it comes to Brahma Vidya, you don't have to ask what time of the day should I study Vedanta. 
which is auspicious direction to study Vedanta? Nothing. Which place should I go? He said, Tadeva Lagnam Sudhinam Tadeva. Whenever you remember the Lord, that itself is auspicious time, auspicious place. But when it comes to Karma Kanda, Desha Kala matters. So even auspicious days are there. Sankranti, Akshay Tritiya. Some places they do Dhanteras. Auspicious days for Dhanam. All of that is Dravi Yajna. And it will not happen if somebody doesn't have Shraddha. <coughs> Only the person who has faith has this Shraddha. He will do such kind of Dravi Yajna. And you'll find different types of sadhakas. You ask them to do the first six yajna. They say, I have no time. Hmm? My life is very, very busy. But you ask me to do dravya yajna, that I will do. Hmm? So whichever yajna we connect with, Bhagawan says, do that yajna. Next one is tapo yajna. Now this tapo yajna is more related to Upavasa related disciplines. Hmm? Otherwise, all yajnas look the same. Huh? So, Madhusuna Saraswati ji, he clarifies, tapo yajna here refers to certain practices which are related to upavasa. Tapasya in general means willingly going through difficulties. Hmm? Who is a tapasvi? The one who has trained his mind to take on certain disciplines. <laughs> Phones have become too complicated now. <laughs> Turning off is hard. One of our Swamiji would say, Kasya Balaka Rodati. <laughs> Whose child is crying? <laughs> That's okay, that's okay, don't worry. It happens. Tapo Yajnaha means Upvasa related disciplines. Yoga Yajnaha. Yoga Yajnaha again is emphasis on Ashtanga Yoga. What we saw before, the whole Ashtanga Yoga limb, it is not focused only on Yama Niyama, not focused only on Pranayama, but the whole Ashtanga Yoga that he practices. Swadhyaya. Jnana Yajnascha. Swadhyaya Yajna means he takes on some sankalpa to do Veda Parayanam. Every word has a special meaning here. Huh? Swadhyaya word means every day he has taken a discipline to do some kind of Veda Parayanam. Sadhana Panchakam, what is the first sadhana? Vedo Nitya Madhiyatam. Nitya Madhyatam, huh? Nitya means every day. Not only sometimes, whenever this mind wants, hold on to one sankalpa and keep it very strong. Samaya lopa happens, kala lopa happens, let it happen. Kriya lopa should not happen. That practice should not be lost on that day. Now there are some people who will say, chanting is not my cup of tea. I am more interested in the meaning. Moment you start any chanting class, they'll say, what, is, what does it mean? Hmm? Which book should we read? They will do the next type of yajna. Jnana yajna ascha apare. Swadhyaya means Vedic chanting. Jnana yajna means knowing the meaning of what we are chanting. Every text, there will be two layers. Swadhyaya means Vedic chanting will give certain results. Means if you just chant Rudram, it has its own benefits. But if you know the meaning of Sri Rudram, it makes a person a devotee. If one is already a devotee, it deepens that devotion. Same with all chants that we do. Swadhyaya, Jnana Yajnasya, Yatayaha. Every word is so beautiful. He says Yataya means he doesn't have false expectations that they are going to happen on their own. All these yajnas, putting forth lot of effort to accomplish each yajna in their life. And samshita vrataha, 
he is striving for perfection in each yajna. See, whichever sadhana we start, we don't become perfect on the first day. Even to build this discipline around doing it regularly, it will come after a long time. But he is striving to get this kind of perfection. He doesn't let go of it very easily. Samshita vrata. Samshita means sharpened. One who has sharpened his mind to practice all these yajnas and strive for perfection in each yajna. Yatayaha samshita vrata. That's why this topic is complementary to Vedanta. In Vedanta, we just say knowledge alone is sufficient to give moksha. But what we struggle with is a turbulent mind. And the art of taming this mind, Bhagwan says, is by being yatayah and samshita vrataha. Take upon some vratam, not because somebody else is saying, because I want to discipline my mind. Okay, more we will see in the next session. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om